So considering we've been building our shipping container home on top of a small mountain in the Catskills in the middle of winter, things have actually been going pretty well. We raised all three 20-foot containers off the ground and got them relatively level on cement blocks. We made our very first cut into the shell of our high cube container and installed a solid steel door. Ooh, wow, that's a handle. The shipping container will become our bedroom, so we insulated the floor with seven inches of hemp wool insulation to try and keep it a little warmer on the coldest of days. It was super easy to work with, and Freya seems to really like it, which in my opinion is a great sign. Once the floor was in and screwed down, we made another two massive cuts into the shipping container to make room for two big, beautiful windows, one of which will be able to slide open and provide lots of fresh air in the warmer months. It makes it actually feel like a living space. Right. Like before we were in a metal box. Sun setting out there. Yeah. In the process, I've taught myself the basics of welding, which has turned out to be way more fun than I was expecting. We even got the framing of our bedroom container finished with the help of our friend Noah, and we are in really, really good shape now. But there's a big storm rolling in right now. We're supposed to get nine to 15 inches, and I haven't had time to set up my tractor yet with the plow or the snow chains. So the shipping container build is gonna have to wait for a minute. There has been a bit of a problem. I just realized that a bunch of the bolts on the wheel fell off at some point. I have no idea when, hopefully recently, but I'm not gonna be able to find them in the snow anymore. And the storm is rolling in pretty quick. So I feel like I took a bit of a gamble focusing on the shipping container build instead of preparing the tractor for winter. And now I'm gonna have to pay the price. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this problem or get the tractor ready at all for plowing our driveway, which basically means we'll just have to park at the bottom and walk up, which really isn't a big deal because I have most of the supplies I need up here. <sighs> Good morning team, it is December 24th around 9 a.m. and Freya and I are headed up the mountain to see if we can start fixing up the wheels on our tractor. We set a new record this winter. Today it's two degrees Fahrenheit. It got down to I think minus five last night and it doesn't look like it's gonna warm up almost at all today. <laughs> but I got really good snow gear on and as long as you keep moving, it's warm. The hard part is whenever you stop moving or when you have to take your gloves off to do something, it can get pretty cold pretty quick. But it's honestly super fun. And the nice thing about the cold temperatures is everything is super dry. So you don't have to worry about getting wet, which I like a lot. <laughs> Here we go. Is where we are at with the tractor. One of the wheels is off and I think I have everything I need to fix this problem now. We'll see. Otherwise it's another four hour adventure to go get materials. But I'm going to install the spacer on this wheel now and if that goes well then I will reattach this wheel and get started on the other side.
we had a bit of a setback. I don't know what these things are called, but it just snapped right off. Always disappointing, I think, when you can break what should be solid metal just by hand. <laughs> I don't know if I did something wrong or if it's just cheap. But now all we have is this little guy because I don't have any more adapters. So we're not going to be able to torque it properly. But I can go back and fix it another time. So I was able to get the first wheel spacer on. I couldn't torque it properly because the attachment piece for the torque wrench snapped off. But I think maybe because it's so cold out, the metal is like extra brittle. But I'm going to try and get the tire on anyways and just see if everything fits. And then one day when the weather's a little warmer, I can go back, take it all off and torque it properly once I have all the pieces I need. <sighs> now I just have to lift the tractor tire onto the studs. I don't know if it like looks heavy or not to you, but to me it feels like it's about 100 pounds. The main challenge is it's just really unwieldy. It's like a hard shape to lift, but we'll give it a go. If I didn't have the backhoe attachment on this tractor, I would be in such big trouble right now. So I got this wheel on, it's fully attached, but the torque wrench I bought, it was the only one they had in stock and it's digital and it just really does not work at all. I don't know if it's like too cold, but that doesn't work. And on top of that, the other piece that I really need to work has like a broken bit in it. So I got to hike down the mountain, get a new one of these and potentially a better torque wrench. Return that one and I think take this wheel apart entirely, redo it all at the proper torque settings. But I just wanted to make sure I had all of the parts I need up here since it takes so long to go back and forth. I also feel like Freya is getting cold up here. So we're going to head back to town for a little bit get some new supplies, and then tackle these problems again. Let's 
Ласка. All right, 48 hours later, I got a new torque wrench. This one is made by Icon, I think. I returned the old Craftsman wrench, and hopefully I have everything I need now to finish the tire job. I'm going to remove the first tire I did, take off everything, and just redo it with the proper torque settings. I think 160 is the number I need for rear tires on the Kubota L35, but yeah, <laughs> wish me luck. So the left tire on the tractor basically just fell off and the right tire is proving extremely challenging to remove. I think the person who last tightened it probably had some sort of machine to do it. I don't know exactly what it's called, like an air socket wrench or something. Um, I'll put that right here. But I just cannot get the tire loose. So I'm gonna give it one last go. I got a special spray, which is supposed to help loosen things up. And I got a dedicated breaker bar and some long pipe so I can get some leverage on it. But I can't try too much more because I'm starting to strip the bolt heads a little bit, so. We'll give it one last go, and if it doesn't work, then I think we're gonna have to get some professionals involved. Oh man, somehow I broke another one of these. I feel like metal shouldn't break that easily. So either I'm doing something wrong or all this stuff is just so cheap. Crazy. So this is the part that broke. You can see it just snapped right off there. And luckily when I went to the store, I had a feeling that these wouldn't last, so I bought two of them. So I had a total of three and I've broken two. I have one left and hopefully it'll work. Kind of weird. I think it's because these are smaller than they should be for this amount of torque, but this part is the only one that will fit inside the spacer, so that's where I'm at. Let's just hope the last one doesn't break. I have a good feeling about this one.
Freya, we did it. The spacer is on. We did it, girl. Look, look at this. <sighs> we did it. <sighs> well, I have to say, I honestly did not think I was going to be able to get it done today, but both the wheels are installed with the spacers on there. I don't have the physical strength today to put the snow chains on there because each one weighs like 75 pounds, but it should actually be pretty easy with my tractor. Tomorrow I'll get that done and hopefully get the plow on there. And then we should be in really good shape for the next snowstorm. So I just took the tractor for a little spin and everything seems to be holding. We went like 15 minutes. And then when I got back, I re-tightened the torque, 160 on the rear wheels. And I would say like two of them were just a teeny bit loose and the rest of them seemed to be holding fine. And then just to be safe, I checked the torque settings on the front wheels. And I think like two or three of those needed to be tightened a little bit as well. So I think from now on, it's just gonna be like a good tractor habit to check the torque settings regularly but at least now i can install snow chains so the way the wheel spacers work is they just create a little bit more of a gap between the wheel and the body of the tractor so that there's room for snow chains i'm not sure if like all models of tractor need wheel spacers for it to work but it looked like it was going to be a little tight on this one so i feel like better safe than sorry and Having the wheels a little further out also makes the tractor more stable on slopes and less likely to tip over, but it does mean that you can't turn quite as well as you used to. I got the chains on the wheels, but I wasn't able to tension this part perfectly. I'm missing a tool. I thought I bought it, but it wasn't included in the order. Um, I don't think it's gonna be the kind of thing you can just pick up at Tractor Supply, so I might have to order that online. And I feel like they are good enough now just to test them out, but I don't think I'm gonna use the tractor a lot until I can get it all fully tensioned properly. But I can at least continue on to the next step. All right, it was not easy, but I got the old bucket off. And then this piece here is a quick attach conversion. 
for the old Kubota tractors, which allows you to use all of the new modern quick attach implements like the plow I bought. It wasn't exactly easy to get it to attach just because some of this old metal seems like it got bent a little bit. So I actually had to grind a little bit of metal off the tractor and get some new bolts at the hardware store because the old ones were so rusted that I ended up just cutting them off and putting whole new stainless steel ones on there. But the idea with this is that supposedly you can just attach new implements super easily. This will be my first attempt. Well, it was not easy, but we did it. The tractor has snow chains, finally, and the plow is in place. And on top of that, the quick attach thing on the front of the tractor is in. So we are in pretty good shape. I ordered the tool I need to finish tensioning the tire chains, and that arrives on Saturday. So hopefully it doesn't snow too much before then. I'm honestly probably not gonna plow any amount of snow less than four inches just because I'm really probably gonna make a mess of things and I don't wanna damage the gravel road. So we'll just take things easy this first winter and learn how to plow. And then <laughs> once I get more comfortable, maybe I'll be able to plow like three inches at a time when it snows, but you don't really need it with the cars we have, honestly. And we don't have salt or gravel or a spreader, so it's basically impossible to keep the road pristine. Just want to like get enough snow off of there that the cars can still get up without bumping like that middle section in between the two tires. <sighs> oh, also we have literally zero buffer in between when we film stuff and when it goes up. So if it snows before Sunday, I'll include some footage of plowing, but otherwise it's going to have to be saved for a future video.